Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Uh, um. <laughs> If I hated camping as much as I had before, Yaku Bauer has proved to me that I should never go back into the forest ever again with his latest film, Gaia. Yaku, how are you today? I'm great, thanks. <laughs> I only started camping recently, so yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you, you make a film about camping, well, you know, about two survivalists that, be, that have a cult-like admiration for mother earth to where she almost turns on all of humanity and that's when you decide to start camping <laughs> yes i know it's crazy but it was just a film although the film becomes more and more reality as time goes by at the moment so yeah uh sorry i didn't turn my camera on earlier please forgive no, me no no yeah. I, I can put mine off as well if you prefer that <laughs> no it's fantastic uh, your your film sits there and just it's a horror movie almost to the level of how Korean horror movies have taken over and scared us to death that we don't sleep for a week. You you put that European fear into us now. When, when That's come, a compliment. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you for not letting me sleep for a couple of days. You and, uh, <laughs> and Tetris Cap. That, that's hope, his cup. That's, that's his cup. cup. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. With, with my horrible pronunciation of uh, every European name from Scandinavia down through uh, uh, Hungary. <laughs> um, when when you first get the script script, and you realize how warped his mind is, and then you add the visuals to to the uh, to the fear factor. What does your family think when they see your final product and go, oh, my God, this is the film that, that our beloved uh, nephew has come up with? <laughs> Look, I mean, there's, there's, it's not like Dash just went into your room and, and wrote that there was like a lot of talk in the beginning of, of what we wanted to set out to do. I mean, he did write and did a lot of research, but, you know, we worked through drafts and drafts of, of renditions of what the story could be. And then, yeah, it, it ended up with what we do see at the moment. Yes, uh, maybe my family are okay. They've been baptized by my theater shows when I was younger. Maybe that prepared them for this. Although I don't think anybody's seen it, except I had a sneak view for my mother. But um, I think she still is <laughs> it. Um, so it's so great that it's coming out in the States and hopefully soon in the rest of the world. Oh, it'd be nice to see. And is it pronounced Carl or Carol? Um, Carl. Carl. You're going to tie me up for a while with these names. I'm going to feel awful. But, Car <laughs> no but Carl's rendition in, in the film as, uh, as Barden was absolutely horrifying. To, yeah. to see someone and the demeanor that he takes on and the way he encompasses this character is almost more frightening than anything I've seen, especially even if you didn't have the, the music or the setting just to see yeah. his mannerisms yeah. and his physicality and everything else yeah. that goes along with it. When you saw him for the first time covered in this muck and ready to be a part, you know, like first day of shooting, what what were you thinking? Like we got the right guy for this, or <laughs> Look, oh my I've, god, this exceeds I've, my I've, expectations. I've known Coral. I've worked with Coral many times before, and in theater and in and in television. And he's just such a talented professional actor, and he is really so prepared. He goes in such detail. I mean, he is a bit of he is a method actor. But I mean, when we initially, I think he was the first one we we approached even when you know we were in the early stages of development was Carl needs to play Barnes. Um, and then he said, he was on his honeymoon and he said, yes, okay, cool. And he started growing his beard. <laughs> and then it gets on pushed later and later. So he grew that beard for like about four or five months. Long story short, then we had shot a week, then we had to stop because of COVID. And then he kept that beard for another four months 
until we were able, luckily, to go back. So, no, I'm so glad that he was part of the project. I think he really, you know, Alex is quite young. I mean, he's, he's a young boy. Monique, I've worked with before. It's a very tricky role, I must say. Uh, ended up being, it, it, uh, anyway, that's a longer story. But yeah, Baron, Baron was really his professionalism and just, you know, he, he really kept, kept the whole thing together. I'm really, really glad he was part of it. Now, when you say he's a method actor, did you just leave him in the forest the whole time filming and go, hey, good luck to you. We'll come back for you later. Save we were joking and saying, no, but he has to sleep. He has to sleep in the hut at night and all these things. But uh, the insects was just so crazy. I mean, every hour we had someone just spraying, you know, like a, a, a earth friendly insecticide because we couldn't, you know. So we were really fighting with nature. Never mind the insects, just places of where these locations were no access to vehicles so but um yeah we were joking you should just stay there and he, he he had to forage for himself and we thought maybe we should give him some magic mushrooms <laughs> that's where he should stay and then we'll just call him for his scene <laughs> but no we didn't uh it's we uh we, we are all professionals so it was just a joke so, so when you went on the scouting uh, mission to, fi to find this forest and, and this place where you decided to film, yeah. uh, please let us know where it is so I can avoid go ever going there because I'm just terrified <laughs> from the scenes in the film. Um, you know, when, when yeah, you it's, it's, a, it's, it's they call it the Titicama uh, forest, and it's really it's a primordial, primordial old forest. There's still, I think, one elephant cow. It's the most southern elephant uh, that exists. And nobody has seen it, but they say it's still, still somewhere in that forest. Um, yeah, it's a very special um, place. Uh, long story, because of COVID, we lost the second half. We lost a lot of our epic locations. So then we had to find a lot of locations in the same area, but on private, private property, which um, was fine in the end. But um, yeah, it's just one of the hurdles we had to jump through to be able to, to just finish the film. Now, was there ever a notion in telling the story, because Gaia is Mother Earth from Greek mythology, uh, right. to the point that because, you know, like the underlining ideology of we've polluted and destroyed the Earth so much, now the Earth, it's her turn to turn against us and discipline us, like that uh, ecological aspect uh, uh, in the storytelling? Yeah. Yes, definitely. I think um, for me, it's also to, you know, to, to maybe also see our life on this planet and that humans are not necessarily the center of existence or, or to bring up that or leave that message with an audience, audience member. And that, yeah, she, we basically fucked up nature and she's gonna <laughs> mess us up. It's a revenge in a way. Um, and I think it brings quite true. And that's why maybe also I like the genre because as I was saying earlier, something about the horror genre where one, can hide certain certain themes, you know, in a monster, in an entity, or you know, in a feeling, um, and that's what, yeah, that's what, what attracts me to the. I'm I'm by no means an expert in horror, I must say. I do watch a lot, but I'm not a horror geek. <laughs> but um, I find the genre very interesting, and maybe it also because of the slightly heightenedness or almost literalized feelings in some way kind of resonated with my theater background i don't know but i do find the genre very interesting and i think it's you know it's it's kind of the commentary genre for me of our times somehow uh, yeah so yes i'm i'm embarking on this yes <laughs> nothing is new i know but it excites me the genre excites me well you know we've noticed throughout history uh, we've become completely urbanized and even in some of our religious teachings, we've allowed the urbanization to divide us from the natural state. Yeah. Uh, it, even if you go back to Abrahamic religions or polytheistic yeah. religions or even pagan religion, yeah. there was always this tie to creation and the earth itself and the world and the entire cosmos. And we've somehow removed ourselves from that as, uh, as we became more urbanized. And you can blame it on the Industrial Revolution. You can blame it yeah. on whatever you like. Exactly. But how do we find now the balance between an industrialized society 
and a natural one where we can connect the two. You, they used to like, you know, you know uh, Central Park in New York, they built a giant park in this major metropolitan area to give you a feel of connectivity yeah. to the farm. But we're not really there anymore. I, to be honest, I, I can't see... I, I'm, I, I can't see this turning out... I don't know how to solve it, I actually. You can either... You can, you can live a bit more consciously and do some of the stuff, yes. Don't, not fly your carbon footprint and all that. But to, to really turn it around, one has to have a totally different way of living, I would imagine. I would say maybe Barnett and, and Stefan's way of living is maybe too extreme. They could be uh, uh, in between. But yeah, I don't know. The future is not great. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> so um, I would like to have hope and I would like to... To, to leave audience with questions or provocations of, of, of future and our place amongst other living things. But I must be say, I'm very skeptical of our future. Yeah. Well, that's either the cynic in you or someone that's seen too much in this world to, to be <laughs> hopeful for society. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit, maybe I'm a, I'm a cynic, but um, look, there's, there's great stuff and I think, you know, it was also nice to play with the idea that you make the antagonist in this film, you make nature. So you've got this weird thing that's the antagonist, but then there's also this attraction because it's nature. So it's got this duality and it's really, it's also playing with who is the monster? Is, it, is the monster inside or is it coming from outside? So is Barent, is it, is it actually Stefan? Is it Gabby who brings society in? So I like those kind of, you know, not necessarily saying this is this or this is that, but to play with those ideas of who is, who is the bad, who is the monster, uh, in inverted commas. Now, before I let you go, because we're running out of time, yeah. uh, you know, when, when you go on a journey like this and to make a film like this, and then to be in nature, it's encompassed by nature itself while making a horror film of this caliber, what did you learn about yourself when it comes not only to, to your carbon footprint, but your desire for a connectivity of the older ways in being connected with the earth? Sure, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, we consciously kept our crew very small. Uh, we were very mobile, so we didn't have big trucks and all that. So that was one way, but it was also... You know, it was also the way it worked. We didn't have the big budget, so that's the way it worked. Um, it's so difficult. It's almost like if you start bringing these worlds together, it's, you can have a message, but I don't know always if it's possible with... Sorry, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm very negative somehow at the moment. You know, with, with deadline and, and funding and your schedule, that you have to get it done. We have to get this... And then whatever else doesn't matter so if i need to run across nature which i shouldn't in this path and trample and stuff it sometimes happened as long as, as much as we try to avoid it <sighs> yeah I, I don't know, I have a very bright image of us in in this place and with nature um, personally oh i i get so immersed in work and it, I have to totally kind of be consumed by work to, to be able to, to resonate or link with it. Yeah, it, it's so murky as well because we were making it and then it is a, we were in like three months lockdown. It's, it's all entangled in this whole thing. And I'm only, I think, coming to, to realization of, of, of these things that was not intended, but it kind of played out in a certain way of a pandemic, of viral or fungal infections that kind of takes over the world and it's basically because of us humans um so yeah i uh, don't know if i answer your question really but um we need to rethink things <laughs> uh, otherwise i don't think we'll see the next 50 years well, Yako, your passion, your confliction, everything that goes along with it plays out beautifully in this film. Guy is available on June 18th in theaters and then on digital, I believe, let me double check, uh, June 25th. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, I can't wait to see what you have next for us. And just Thanks. remember, 
don't mess with the plan. <laughs> she will come for you. Thanks, eh? Thanks a lot. All right.